And good morning. We thank you for joining the Come As You Are Ministries once again for another great and beautiful Wednesday morning that the Lord has allowed us to see. And as always, we like to say this is a day that the Lord has made, so we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We thank you as always for joining us on this uh, beautiful Wednesday morning and even on Sunday morning. We thank you. We thank you for all your love. We thank you for your support and your prayers of this ministry. So right now, let's get into what God has for us. We're going to pick right back up where we were last Wednesday because we did not get a chance to really finish as we talked about changing for the better. And our text scripture is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you once again for another great and glorious opportunity to come before this, your people, O oh God. And as always, Father, we ask you to hide us behind the cross where they will only hear and see you. Father God, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Lord God, help us all to keep our eyes and minds focused on your word, your will, and your way. Because, Father God, without you, we can't make it in this life. Father God, we need you. We need your direction, Lord God. We need your help. We need your guidance, Father. Father, bless our time here together, Lord, that we will hear from you. And we ask you to come on in so we can feel your presence, Father. Bless us right now, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, once again, we're looking at changing for the better. Changing for the better. And you know, last week, of course, we talked about how important change is, and we're going to continue to talk about, you know, changing and what's the importance of it. You know, change is can be good. And we have to understand that when you're changing, and I need folks to understand this, you're not changing for somebody else. We have to learn to change for ourselves. We got to learn to make sure that what we're doing is lining up with Christ. We got to learn to make sure that everything that we say and do is pleasing in God's eyesight. When you make changes in your life, you, you know, I understand when I'm in a relationship and my spouse want me to make changes and this, that, and the other, and that's cool. But make sure that the changes that you're making are lining up with what God wants you to do. Because a lot of times we are allowing folk to change us. They change our attitude. They change our minds, our mannerism. We, we allow people just to change everything about us. The way we talk, the way we walk and we act. We allow people to come into our lives and change us. You know you're saved. You know that you love the Lord and you know that you're trying to live for him. So why would you allow somebody else to come in and change that? Or cause you to start doing stuff that you don't normally do. Causing you to semi-act out of your character. And I need y'all to understand that when I'm teaching, I'm not just talking to you all. I'm talking to myself too. Because we've all made mistakes in life. We've all made bad choices in life. We've all allowed people to take us out of our character. And we've allowed people to change who we are. We allow people to change the way we talk. When we're supposed to be, as the Bible says, our conversation is supposed to be seasoned with the word of God, with his grace. It's supposed to be seasoned like we are Christians, but we allow people because folk put down on Christians and talk about folk for being saved. We allow people to come in and change us. But my thing is, if you can allow people to change who you are that fast, why can't you allow God to change who you are that fast? Why can't you allow God to change your mindset about things that fast? One thing I learned, especially with people, we listen to any and everything. And we take it to heart and we run with it. Somebody can come to you and tell you something about somebody else and you'll take it. And yeah, you're going to tell somebody else too. And you're going to spread it. And you believe it. Just what it is. Why can't we believe the word of God like that? Why can't we allow the word of God to change us like that? to change our mindset about how we deal with people, change our attitude of how we talk to people. No, but we'll allow the world to make our ch that change for us. The world is, is, is so messed up nowadays that the world will change your outlook of you. It will change the way you view yourself. Because what? You'll say, I'm too big. You'll even say for some of us that are handicapped, I'm handicapped, nobody's going to accept me. 
I'm too fat. Nobody's going to accept me. But you got to understand something. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made in what? In his image. So you can say what you want to about me, baby. I know I'm, I look good. I'm handsome. Why? Because God made me. I'm not going to allow you to change anything about how I see myself. Yeah, I may be handicapped, but at the same time, there's a whole lot God can bless you to do. Don't let people change who you are. Remember, God created you in his likeness and his image. We looked at the simple fact that the steps of a good man are what ordered by the Lord. When we allow God to change us and when we allow God to rearrange us, he begins to order your steps in his word. He begins to show you how you're supposed to walk, how you're supposed to talk, how you're supposed to live. Yeah, some of these things are hard to do because, it, you know, the Bible says that we must learn to be angry and sin not. And, you know, that's not easy for all of us as, as, as people. It's not easy to get mad and not go off and not show the fact that you're mad. It's kind of hard to do that. I'll be the first one to admit it's hard when you're mad and not show it. But I'm learning as I get older that you know what? Not all the time you got to show people how you feel on the inside. Sometimes you have to learn to let God handle some stuff. Sometimes you got to learn that even when you get in a crowd of people and there's a lot of folk there that you really don't care for or you're not that cool with or whatever, it's okay to just sometimes just sit back and be quiet, just smile. How many times Jesus was sitting among people that he knew didn't like him? that he knew did not care for him, that he knew were trying to, as, as they say in the streets, come for him. He knew it. But the fact of the matter is he sat around and he smiled and laughed with him anyway. Why? Because he understood and knew me trying to get back at you ain't going to fix the problem. It's not going to help anything. So he's showing us that we need to change our attitudes on how we deal with one another. We look at when he changed Saul to Paul. And we also talked about how much energy we use when we out there in the world. When we out there in the world, we can rock and roll all night long. We're going to go from one club to the next club. We go from one party to the next party. We just rocking and rolling all night long and still get up the next morning and roll like nothing never happened. But the fact of the matter is we can rock and roll all night long with the devil. But when it comes time to get up to go to church or it comes time to get up to go to this, that, and the other that involves God, we can't do it. But the thing is, that same energy you were using to gang bang, that same energy you were using to tear down the kingdom of God, the same energy song that you were using to disrupt, the same energy that you were using trying to mess my kingdom up, I'm going to show you that you can use that same energy to upbuild, to uplift the kingdom of God, to make sure that the kingdom of God is operating the way it should. But the fact of the matter is we have to allow God to come in and make that change. And some of us God has to do some stuff, who Lord, to get our attention. He really has to do some serious stuff to get some of our attention because some of us are so far out there that you can't even see land. We're so far out there that we won't even listen to anything that has anything to do with Christ. We're so far out there. And God has to do what? Some stuff to get your attention. Sometimes he got to knock you down like he did Saul. He knocked Saul down, and Saul was blinded, couldn't see, but he heard a voice. And it doesn't matter who you are. I said this last week, and I say it again. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be the chief of the sinner. You can be whatever you want to be. But when you come in contact with Jesus, there is no way you can't recognize that he's in the house. There's no way that you're not going to be able to know that it's Christ Jesus that's talking to you. Why? Because of who he is. He has that type of power. Everybody knows him. They might not accept him, but they know it. Saul was knocked down on that beast, off of his beast. God got his attention. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? He said, it's hard to kick against the pricks. In other words, you out here trying to persecute me. You out here trying to put me down. You out here trying to kick against what I'm trying to build. But I need you to understand something. Uh, the power and the magnitude that God has, it doesn't matter what you try to do. The Bible even said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will what? Forever stand. That means you can do what you want to do. You can say what you want about, about Christ. You can do whatever you feel like you're big and bad enough to do. 
but I promise you, it will not perish. It will keep going. It will keep rolling. It will keep going in the right direction. Uh, for some reason, you all, we've lost Facebook Live. I don't know what happened, but it uh, kind of triggered out on me, but that's okay. Um, we're going to keep rolling with what we have. Um, we have to learn that we must learn to change and allow God to change us in the way he wants to change us. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. In other words, what does that mean? I need to be transformed into the way God wants me to, not conforming to this world. I'm going to conform to what God has for me to do, not for what I want to do, not for how, I want, how the world wants me to be, but it's about how God wants me to be. So we must learn to understand that. We must learn to do his will. We must learn to show forth his glory. We have to learn to change the way God wants us to change, conform to him. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Trust me, he knows everything about you. He knows how you act, how you're going to live, how you're going to react to stuff. He knows. So he wants you to change. He knows what needs to be changed. You may not know, but he knows it. And so with the fact that he knows it, you know he's going to what? Help you to change for what? The better, not for the worse. We allow people to come into our lives to change us. And I tell folk all the time, I thank God my wife came into my life. She changed me for the better. Regardless of what may, other folk may say, think, or feel, she changed me for the better. When I look at how I used to dress and the way I dress now, sometimes I sit back and scratch my own head and be like, man, really? You used to dress like that? She changed it for the better. My attitude and my outlook on a lot of things, she changed it. And it was why? Because God wanted the change to be there. And sometimes God will use other people to open your eyes to see that this is what you need to do. So we got to thank God each and every day that he, he allows us the opportunity to make the choice to change, to make the choice to be what he would have for us to be. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing what of your mind. Change starts right here. Because when you begin to change your mindset on some stuff, you begin to change your outlook on the way things are. You won't see things that way anymore. You won't feel the way you feel anymore. But you got to change your mindset about stuff. You got to let that mind be changed. Because the Bible says, let this mind be in you. That's what? Also in Christ Jesus. So we got to allow him to change our mind. Because when he changed our mindset, a lot of things that we used to enjoy hearing, we're not going to want to hear that no more. A lot of things we're okay with seeing, we're not going to be okay with seeing no more. A lot of ways we used to feel about people and feel about stuff in our life, we won't feel that way anymore. Why? Because he changed it. He changed your mind. That's why I love that song that is an old song by James Bigman said, if it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? My life was nothing until he set me free. What a change he made in my life. No more compromising the wrong for the right. He made a difference. He made a difference in my life. It goes on to say, I don't walk like I used to walk. Why? Because he made a difference. I don't talk like I used to talk. Why? Because he made a difference. I don't even live or give like I used to. Why? Because he made a difference. He made, he made, he made a difference in my life. I'm glad that I came to know him. Because when he changes, he changes everything. That's why Tremaine Hawkins said, what a wonderful change has come over me. He changed everything. My attitude, my mindset, my thought process, he changes it all. So I'm here to tell you, allow God to come in and change you. Allow him to change your attitude. It's okay. You don't always have to have a bad attitude. Let God change your attitude. You don't always have to think evil about stuff and about people. Let God change that. I promise you, when he changes you, you'll be happy. Not only will you be happier, but the folk around you will be a lot happier too. Why? Because you're a better person. You don't have to be the same person that you are. Allow God to come in and not only come in, but allow him to rest, rule, and abide within you. Allow him to, as, as my mom in Nashville would say, let him do some furniture moving and, and directing some traffic in here. Let him make some changes in you. Because when he makes the changes, you'll know it, others will know it, and you'll feel much better about it. God bless you.